morning. Uh, Merry Christmas. Would you guys stand and sing with us? Welcome to The Rock. Please go ahead and have a seat. Welcome to all those you are here in person and those that are joining on the live stream. I know you have questions today because you see me here, so let's get started. Rowan, where's Pastor Mike? He and his family are away, taking some time away for the holidays. And so um, the uh, next question is, where's this guy from? So I'm Tim Mall. I'm one of the leaders here at The Rock and uh, helping fill in today. Uh, Pastor Rich Boring will be with us next week uh, leading. 
Where's the prayer cards? Uh, they're right in the seats in front of you. If you have a prayer request and would like to fill those out, uh, you can hold up your hand during the offering time later, and I'll pick those up, and we can pray over them right away today. Or if you want to drop them in the baskets that are out uh, on the table, uh, you can do that, and the ladies' prayer group will pray over them. Uh, those of you in the live stream, if you're, again, obviously not able to fill out those cards, if you want to make contact with us at The Rock, uh, there's your points of contact there with the uh, info at therocksewer.org for information or prayers at therocksewer.org uh, for prayers. Where's the next gathering? You know, it'll be right here, but it will not be until January 3rd, and so there are no New Year's Eve or New Year's Day gatherings here. Uh, if you're looking for a, a service on those, again, St. John will be having some that are available on the live stream. Lot, lots of stuff available uh, online for those, but our next gathering here will be next Sunday. Uh, where's the basket for the sheep offering? Uh, again, if you recall, this would be the last Sunday where we're collecting funds for Heifer International uh, to uh, uh, send some sheep uh, out there into the world to help families that are in need. Uh, our goal was to get 10 sheep. I know we were at 12, and Wayne, do we have an update? No, nope. so we are 12 plus. Uh, and again, the, there's a basket out on the table if you'd like to help us get to... Uh, the magic number that we'll have for this year that we can send away, that would be great if you do that this morning. Uh, where's the box for the food pantry items? Well, it's right out there. The uh, If you'd like to support the food pantry, December was tuna, and so if you brought tuna and want to drop it in the box out there in the fellowship area, great. Uh, for January, if you're looking ahead, it is soap and shampoo that you can bring anytime during January uh, to the Blue Valley Pantry, and they certainly appreciate all our support. Where's Nico? Nico is in the back and uh, will be out there to greet any of you uh, right after worship if you'd like to uh, greet Nico. If you'd like to be involved in the Comfort Dog Ministry, again, uh, speak to uh, my wife Sarah. I'll be handling him and uh, any of the other handlers that are around this morning. Uh, feel free to talk to them about how you can be involved. Uh, where's your mask? Obviously, we are under the... Uh, a mask mandate in Seward. Uh, that means, again, at least for now, anytime we're in a public space, which this qualifies as one, uh, we're required to wear masks. So we pray that that will be uh, limited here in the future, that the virus will be under control. But for now, uh, we live with those rules. Uh, where's the Bible study? The uh, Coming up in January, there will be a Bible study right here led by uh, Tom and Sue Briggs. Sue is right there. She'll wave, and Tom's at the back. Uh, if you have any questions about that, please ask them about that study. Uh, it's a great study. We were actually involved in the group that did it too, too many years ago uh, to admit, but it was a great study, and uh, it's interesting how God used that at the Rock again. I know the families that were in there, we had about 14 kids between all of us, and that was really the start of kids at the Rock and things, and so God's really used that, and I know he'll uh, use it again with Tom and Sue's leadership for that group. Uh, where's the king? Again, that's our main question for the day that we'll be looking at is, uh, where's the king? And so we'll be coming back to that in just a minute, but now if you would stand and uh, say hello to one another, again, wave to those who are on the live stream, uh, then uh, we'll get started here in just a second. Our theme verse, the, based on where's the king, comes from Matthew two verses, uh, Matthew chapter two verse two. If you'd read this along with me, they asked, "Where's the child who has been born that be the king of the Jews?" When we were in the east, we saw his star. Now we've come to worship him. If also while you're standing, if you join me in uh, confessing our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
As we come before the Lord today, we realize that we're not worthy to do so, that um, all that sin, all that kind of stuff is built up, that we don't feel like we're worthy, but God invites us to come forward to him and confess those sins. Uh, so let's take some time now just to pray to God and, and uh, confess to him those sins that we've committed this past week. The good news about our sins starts with the birth of Jesus that we just celebrated. Before Jesus was born, uh, an angel told Joseph this. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. So at the very beginning, there was that promise that Jesus was going to save people from their sins. And the payoff came uh, nine chapters later in Matthew. It says, Jesus stepped into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own town. 
Some men brought to him a paralyzed man lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. At this, some of the teachers of the law said to themselves, This fellow is blaspheming. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, Get up, take your mat, and go home. Then the man got up and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were filled with awe, and they praised God who had given such authority to man. So Jesus was born to have that authority, and he exercised that authority on earth. And the better news still is he exercised that authority for us. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all righteousness. So the good news of 1 John 1, 9 is those sins that we came to with today, they've already been cleansed away by the work of Jesus. He is the king. He has that authority. Where is the king? He's right here with us, and he's cleansed us from our sin.
While the band is getting uh, settled, I want to divide you into four groups. And if you're watching the live stream at home, divide yourself into four groups if there's four of you or as many as you can divide yourself in. But uh, So group one will be you guys right up here, including the boring. So you guys would be group one. And everyone back here, you guys are group two. All right, that group two. And from house back, you guys are group three. And this group and that, you guys are group four. All right? One, two, three, four. And I'll give you your instructions here in a little bit. All right. I'll confess to you, when I watch my children play sports, or when I lead up here, all the blood rushes to my vital organs, and so my hands and my feet are just freezing right now. <laughs> Don't know what it is about kids' sports, this, but that's what happens. So, uh, so group one, your assignment is... Uh, when I say, where's the king, and say, group one, where's the king? So when I'll put it, you're supposed to say, Jesus is with us, glory to God. Right? Let's practice that. Jesus is with us, glory to God. Okay, you got to try a little harder. Jesus is with us, glory to God. All right, that's group one. Group two, group two, you're a little bit more reserved. So you're, you're saying, group two, Jesus is with us, I think. Right? You got that? Jesus is with us, I think. Okay. Uh, group three, in the back, you're a little bit more distracted still, so you're just what king, all right? What king? What king? Yeah, what king? All right? And group four, you guys are all over it. You're saying, I'm the king, all right? I'm the king. You got that? I'm the king. So group one, group two, group three, group four. Again, for those of you playing along at home, you need group one, group two, group three, group four. Right. So with that as background, let's read from Matthew 2, uh, chapter, uh, verses 1 through 16, which is the, the story of Jesus' birth, and particularly the, the wise men coming to see Jesus. It's Matthew 2, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? Where's the king? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod heard this, King Herod heard this, he was, with, he was disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem and Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, and the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose, it went ahead of them until it stopped over the place that where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So they got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod, and so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophets, out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. So where's the king? And that's what uh, the Magi come to Jerusalem, to Herod, and say, where's the king? We've been following his star. Where can we find him? What's going on? And I want to think about, first of all, Jesus really wasn't acting like a king really much at all. 
If you think about where Jesus was born, again, he's in Bethlehem. That's a small kind of little podunk town, six or seven miles from Jerusalem. Uh, he's in a manger. Uh, the, uh, we don't know where he stayed exactly after that all happened, but again, he stayed in this small town. Uh, there's no palace. There's no armies. There's, there's really nothing going on. He's not looking like a king at all. And how did, So when the Magi come and say, where's the king, how do all these people respond? Well, let's think first of the people of Jerusalem. So people of Jerusalem, what did they say? Group three, what did they say? White king. So they're going on about their lives and saying, gosh, King Herod's all disturbed about something, but what king? We're not aware of any king. And they didn't do anything about it. Again, apparently, seven miles away in Bethlehem, there had been shepherds going nuts about something, and there's angels, and there's kings coming to say we followed a star. And the church leaders, they knew the Messiah was born in Bethlehem. They didn't even go check. I mean, it's seven miles is a long way in that time, but it's not that far away. You'd think... I'm a church leader. I've been waiting for the Messiah forever. I know he's going to be born in Bethlehem. Someone's saying, I think the child's there. Aren't you going to go look? No. What king? We're just going to get on with our lives and do what we've done before. So they really just ignored the whole thing. They missed it. Right? Herod, group four, what did Herod say? I'm the king. Where's the king? Well, I'm the king. You found him. And if there's anyone else who's king, I need to know about it. Or who thinks they're king, I'm going to know about it, and I want to do something about it. So he tells the Magi, go there and uh, find him for him. Come back to me so I can go worship him too. Again, we know what Herod is up to. But again, he's threatened by even the thought of anyone other than the king. But again, he doesn't go do anything. He doesn't even send guards or anything there now. Uh, he just says, I'm the king. I'm in control. I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'll just take care of it when the Magi come back to me. Right? Third group involved uh, is Mary and Joseph. Group two, Jesus is with us, I think. Can you think about Mary and Joseph? Uh, when we started this out, Mary, the, Jesus was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. She saw an angel. She goes and sees Elizabeth. She's singing songs, and she says, I'm blessed among uh, women. But by the time we get here, a lot has happened. She's been on a donkey from all the way from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Uh, these shepherds have showed up. Now these magi have showed up. Uh, and now, uh, not too much later, it's time to go to Egypt. And we're leaving in the middle of the night because someone's trying to kill the baby. Uh, so uh, the Bible talks about her pondering all these things in her heart. So she's gone. She's still right there in God's will doing what God wants her to do. But I don't know that she's convinced. She's not glorifying God anymore. And Joseph, again, it doesn't tell us a lot about Joseph, but I can relate to Joseph uh, in that he's just got to be a freaked out dad, doesn't he? Because, he, again, he, had, he trekked his wife all the way across to Bethlehem. There's no place for her to be out in Bethlehem. Now shepherds come, and they're all excited. They've seen angels. These magi come. They bring all these gifts. What's the next message from the Lord? It's not, again, if I'm thinking I'm Joseph, and gosh, this is finally working out. I've got gold, frankincense, and myrrh in my pocket. Things are going well. Here we go from here. And the next message from God is, run away. Not your king's going to conquer everything. Uh, we're sending armies of angels to protect you. It's run away because Harold's trying to kill you. So Joseph and Mary are right there, but there's got to be some doubt there. So they're saying, I'm here, yeah, Jesus is with us, but we're going through a lot right now, and I'm not quite sure what this all means. Mary was pondering them in their heart. Then the last group uh, is group number one. Group number one, Jesus is with us. Glory to God. Yeah, I, let, I let you go way too long for you to come back. <laughs> Jesus is with us. Glory to God. Yep. And so this is, this is the angels and the shepherds. And so if we think back to uh, Christmas night, the, the angels come, and the angel tell the shepherds uh, the good news, and then this whole choir comes, uh, and it's just crazy. And the angels can't contain themselves, because you know what? The angels know the end. They know, they know victory's in this. I don't know if exactly they know the whole plan or that. I don't know how that works. But they know it's all good, because the Savior of the world is right over there. And the shepherds, I don't know what they understand either, but they're all in. They've seen this, and they are running to... Bethlehem, and they're telling everybody they know, uh, they're all in, right? So that's, again, just a whole variety of responses from people on that first Christmas, uh, from 
the king's right here and we're excited to what king to, well, no, I'm the king to, I'm not really sure what's going on. There's all those kinds of things. And the people of that first Christmas, they're actually a pretty good picture uh, of us. If you think about it, uh, Jesus doesn't come like a king to us. He doesn't break in and say, boom, I'm the king, obey me. Right? How do we respond to Jesus now? Again, uh, the Bible tells us that he comes more quietly than that. If you think about Revelation. Revelation 3.20 says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. And he doesn't say, I'm here, I'm the king, and I'm bursting in the door, eat with me. He says, I'm here knocking. And if you'll open the door, I'll come in. But he comes quietly. He comes gently. There'll be a point in time in the future when he comes. We'll talk about that in a minute. When he comes, and it's not so gentle. Uh, but right now, he comes gently. And how does, he, how does he reach out to us? He reaches out to us with this spirit. In Corinthians, it says this. Now, the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God, who has given us the spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. So we have that spirit, again, who whispers to us. And he says, the spirit is saying, where's the king? And he's telling us, the king's right here. The king's right within you. I'm right here. Your sins are forgiven. You have peace. You have God. You have this all-powerful God with you. We don't always respond so well. Again, how do we respond to him even though we've got that message? Well, when we wake up on Christmas morning, again, we have. We've just been through the celebrations and that, and everything's good. We've been to Christmas Eve service. Uh, it's easy to say, group one. Jesus is with us. Glory to God. It's easy to be on that mountaintop peak. and We're all good. We're in group one. We're feeling it. I'm in with God's plan. I know where everything is at. But then uh, the next day comes, and it's back to work, back to school, back to pandemics, in the middle of it, and you're all busy. Uh, the Spirit whispers again, where's the king? He's right there with us. But we say group three, what king? That's, again, this is me all over the case. So, again, I, uh, it's a busy time of year for me, and so I can barely get through Christmas Day before I've got emails saying this needs to be done, that needs to be done, that. And I'm saying, what king? What king? I don't have time for any of that stuff. Uh, I'm even a little mad. Again, group three people, you get a little mad at the group one people when they're a little too happy about things. Uh, that's me. So, you, you know, if you've got a house, a mixed household where you've got a group one and a group three together, the group one people, even though it's great, they're making the group three, three people mad. You're saying, you're way too happy, uh, and we've got all this stuff to get done, and what, what's all this? What king? Or sometimes, again, things are going well. Again, it's a great day. Kids are doing well. Everything's going well, and you're feeling large and in charge, and the spirit whispers, where's the king? And you respond, well, I'm the king. I got this. I got this covered. Again, it's been I got the pandemic covered. Things are going well despite all of that. Uh, things are going well, and don't Jesus, don't crimp my style. Again, I'm, I don't have room for that. Uh, I've got things going, and I'm the one who's in control. Again, group four, I'm the king. And then last but not least, it's not too often, but things do happen where we, we feel kind of close to God, but then something bad happens. Again, we lose a job. There's some illness. There's some death in the family. There's a pandemic. Uh, there's all those things going on. The spirit, the spirit says, where's the king? And group two, the sp you answer, Jesus with us, I think. And I think so, uh, but I've got that doubt. I'm really thinking hard about things, and I'm kind of where I think I need to be, but I'm certainly not in group one. I'm not saying glory to God. I'm saying, gosh, I don't quite understand this all. We doubt and we wonder. So what's, what's the point of all of this? What's the point of thinking about all this? Uh, we know that Jesus is with us. We know that he forgives us. Uh, we have all that good news. God wants us in group one. He wants us to have that everlasting joy, but he knows we're not going to be there. But he comes to us wherever we're at. If we're in group one, group two, group three, group four, he comes to us every day and says, where's the king? I'm here, right? I'm here with you. He gives us that message. And what do we do to be able to respond to keep moving towards that group one? One is realize it's the devil who's doing that. Again, God intends us to be in group one. It's the devil who's sneaking in and saying, it's not God that's doing it. You're really doing that. I am the king. Or it's the devil saying, there's all this other stuff. You just need to be busy with all of that. You don't have time for a king. 
Or it's the devil sneaking in and saying, is God really good? Would a good God really let that happen to you? It's the devil, and we need to understand that. Once we do, then these are the steps that I would recommend for all of us to answer that question. Where's the king? And to one is to be ready for the question. No, wake up each day and say, where's the king? Again, I know he's right here in my heart. I know he's with me. Be ready for that. Remember that Jesus is with us, and he's all-powerful. As you go through the book of Matthew and the book of John, all the Gospels, really, uh, we see all these miracles to know that not only Jesus is with us, but he's got power over everything. He's got power over the little things. He'll change water into wine to make your wedding go well. Now, that's pretty petty in the world of the universe, but he'll do that. He can control the weather. He can calm storms. He can do those types of things. He can heal sickness. He can raise the dead. He can forgive sins. We've got it all. Remember, we're in a battle and put on the armor of God. So don't get misled. Again, it's a trick of the devil as well to say, hey, God's with you. It should all be easy. God doesn't say that. It's not going to be easy. Uh, He says we're in a battle. No, we need to put on the armor of God. The verse from uh, Ephesians tells us that. Ephesians 6, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Jesus isn't saying it's going to be easy. He's going to say it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a battle every day. But he's with us, and if we strap on that armor, we're ready to go. Then last but certainly not least, remember we win. It may not look like it every day. Uh, on earth here, but Jesus is coming back, and he's coming with power and glory, and it's not going to be quiet. Uh, Thessalonians tells us this, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command and with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead of Christ will rise first. That is not a quiet event. It's not a quiet birth in a manger. This is boom, the whole world knows. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Remember that, encourage one another with these words. So when that Spirit comes to you and says, where's the king? Let the Spirit lead you to that spot. Let the Spirit lead you to group one to say, Jesus is with us, glory to God, despite all the other stuff that's going on. Uh, let him lead you there. So again, once more for all the groups. Groups one says, Jesus is with us. Glory to God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you uh, that you came as a little baby, that you came as a king even though you don't always act like one, Lord. We thank you that you come quietly with your spirit, Lord, and help us to answer as you would have us answer. Where's the king? The king is with us. Jesus is with us. Glory to God. Thank you for the forgiveness you give and for the promise of eternal life with you forever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This time we will uh, uh, not take an offering, but we will uh, remind us of the time we would give our offerings. The baskets, if you'd like to drop an offering on your way out, are uh, there. And we thank you all for your generosity throughout the year. And I wanted to, just one thing that uh, was in one of the devotions I was reading this week that I had never seen before, and I just wanted to point out. This is from Leviticus. Uh, It says, when you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Leave them for the poor and for the foreigner residing among you. I am the Lord your God. So this is over and above all the stuff that people do with giving their tithes and that kind of stuff. This says, leave some stuff around the edges. And so I would encourage you, this week to leave some stuff around the edges. Figure out what are those little things you can do, whether it's dropping your change in the Ronald McDonald house, 
bucket on your McDonald's drive through or uh, any of those little things you can do to say, I'm just leaving a little bit around the edges this week. pray with me. Dear Lord, we thank and praise you once again, Lord, for your forgiveness, uh, that you are our king and you're not far off. We don't have to search for you. You come to us every day. You come to us with forgiveness. You come with peace. You come to us with light. Uh, help us to see that in our daily lives, to accept that forgiveness daily and live that way, Lord. We come to you also, Lord, with concerns today, Lord. We ask that you would be with uh, Andy and his family. Give them peace and comfort. 
uh, as he is in hospice. And uh, we ask that he and his family would know that you're in control and that um, things will progress at your timing, Lord. And we ask that you give them the hope of the resurrection to look forward to and, and life eternal. And if it's your will that healing would come and more time would come, uh, we pray for that as well. Lord, be with Emily as she continues to struggle with cancer. Uh, give her peace and comfort. Give the doctors who are working with her, give them wisdom. Uh, give, again, give her the assurance that you're in control and that your forgiveness uh, conquers all and that at the end you conquer everything and there's a new life to come. Be with baby Maverick and his family who was born early, Lord. Again, as he struggles, Lord, uh, Give him strength and give him stamina. Again, give him healing uh, in your time and in your way, Lord. We give thanks to Lord, Lord for Kip and Anna and, and for their marriage that's coming up. We ask that you would bless their celebrations and bless their life together, Lord, that you would bless them and use them as a blessing to others uh, during their entire marriage. We pray for safe travel for Gretchen as she returns uh, next week back to college, and we pray for safe travels for all those who are traveling to be with family or traveling to come home with family, that, be travel, that their travel would be safe. And Lord, we ask that you would bless the times of fellowship that all these families have together, that again, they would uh, be a blessing to all those or a refreshing time for all those involved and give glory to you. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You'd speak with me one more time our theme verse for today from Matthew 2. They asked, where is the child who has been born to be king of the Jews? When we were in the east, we saw his star. Now we've come to worship him. Blessings on the balance of your weekend. Why don't you stand up as well? I forgot to say that.
and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christmas Day is Christmas Day. 